especially for Mary and John, uh, you both kind of talked about how you brought that into your company and it was new. What sort of things did you do to start that process and how did you grow it from the ground up? Well, I, sometimes I figure if you can't go through the front door, you go to the, through the back door. And if not everybody is buying the concept, uh, our, one of our main customers, in addition to students, are our employers, because we're really supported by the employers of, uh, at this university. And so what I did, as I said, I had people from our servant leadership department come in and talk to our employers. And our employers are all over it, and they talked about it. And we want to please our employers. And so, of course, I already was on board. And as we took this up to upper administration, the, the links began to happen. And so this is how we managed to get this culture of servant leadership here. We still have people that we have to convince, you know, and show them that there's a separation between religion and servant leadership, but it's all about being good. I can't shove, I don't believe in shoving my religion down anyone's throat, but I can talk to them about doing the right things because that's what you should be doing. You want me to answer that part too? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> we have a CEO where we're privately owned, uh, Don Zillow, um, and he actually heard Ann Rhodes from Southwest Airlines many years ago and said that he wanted Quick Trip to be the Southwest Airlines of the convenience store industry. So we have buy-in from the very top. Uh, two things, the first thing we did is we sat down with every single leader in the company and said, give us seven attributes of your eight players. And it turned out all to be things like empathy and compassion and trust and whatever. And to get everybody to buy and say, this is what we're looking for. The second thing I believe in, Tom would know that I'm preaching to the choir on this one. I, I think every good company that wants to have servant leadership meets a corporate storyteller. The person that really is always telling the story. I, I'm a firm believer in stories. Uh, the stories touch our, our limbic brain. And that's much deeper than anything in our cerebral cortex. And if I can touch your limbic brain with a story that has emotional content, you'll remember that less than at least 12 times longer than anything in your cerebral cortex. Policies, HR policies, that cerebral cortex stuff, but a story that's got emotional content, that's how you really impact cultural behavior. So I think you have to have a cultural storyteller as well.